All right, baby, I am back yet again to help you build a massive squat. Now, I'm a 415 kilogram squatter that is 925 pounds in competition. And today, I'm going to show you the three squat variations that were absolutely integral in me building a massive squat. I'm going to show you how to execute them and where to put them in your program. If you're not doing these movements, you are seriously missing out. Let's get it, baby. Now watch as she descends. She is maintaining tension. Three seconds, perfect shape, perfect positioning. She's externally rotating from the floor. Tension in the hips. Just remember an excellent technique is the key to unlocking a massive squat. You can muscle up whatever you can muscle up, but you're always gonna be selling yourself short if your technique is shit. And that's just facts. And welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on YouTube, Cult Strength. Now I am here yet again to help you add kilograms or pounds to your squat. Now I'm a 415 kilogram squatter. That is 925 pounds in competition. And I'm gonna show you today the three variations that I found to be the most useful in building such a big squat. Now I haven't actually been able to do any low bar squatting in a little while. I've had a bit of an injury but I still wanted to give you this video because I did post last week a squat tutorial, how to increase your squat instantly, which was very popular. And I had a lot of people asking for more squat related content. So here I am, baby. Now for today, I'm gonna have M here. Em, come sit down. So Emma is a coach here at Temple. She is a powerlifting coach and Emma actually films all of my YouTube videos. Emma is also a very good squatter. So today she's gonna to be doing the demonstrations while I explain and break down the techniques and how you can implement these variations into your program to help you build a massive squat. Now, what I'm gonna get you to do before we start is make sure you like this video, make sure you drop a comment and subscribe. And again, drop a comment and let me know what sort of tutorial like videos you wanna see from me because as I said, I'm always willing to make videos that will help you. I wanna see all of you get strong. I love seeing the comments of you guys telling me how much success you've had since watching my channel and how it's helped you. You know, I put a lot of time into this and I wanna make it the best product possible. So I'm always looking for fantastic ideas for content. I'm willing to make content as much as I possibly can. We have made, this is day 14 in a row. Videos 14 days in a fucking row. We're on a fucking roll and we ain't slowing down we're just gonna go faster. Absolutely. Absolutely. But now we're gonna get stuck into these squat variations. And let me just say, if these movements are not in your current program, you are absolutely missing out and you need to consider using them if you want a massive squat. These are the tried and tested fucking squat variations. Okay, it's nothing fancy, no bullshit, just a bar and you, and you're gonna get shit done. Ready to go? Definitely. Let's go. All right, guys, now the first squat variation that you should definitely have in your program is a paused squat. Now, this is, you could say, one of the more simple and straightforward squat variations, but don't discount that because it is probably one of the most effective, in my opinion, it is my favorite squat variation for building a big low bar squat, okay? so. Besides obviously just doing a low bar squat, for me what helps me build a big competition squat, I'm talking 415 kilos, okay, it's 925 pounds. The low bar squat was instrumental for me in building that, okay? Now, I'm gonna have Emma here give you some demonstrations of how we wanna perform, you know, this squat to be able to transfer that carryover to your regular competition squat, right? Now, how we execute this movement is very important. There has to be intentions with everything that we do. Okay, so no matter what variation that we're doing for whatever body part, there's always a purpose for us doing it. Now, for us, for a power lifter, right now, the purpose and benefits that I believe you get from doing a well-executed pause squat is excellent positioning in the hole. That is the focus of the pause squat, okay? So what I want you to focus on when you're doing this movement, when you're doing it, right, before you do it, think about 
What does your ideal squat position look like in the hole? Okay, ask yourself literally what does that look like? Now you need to be able to do that, to replicate that. Your goal is to get yourself into the hole in a paused position in that ideal shape or position that you seem fit, right? So everyone has a different ideal position in the hole, okay? It's gonna be different from person to person, but our goal is to be in our perfect position when we're in the hole. So M, M's gonna give us a quick demonstration of three repetitions. Now she's just using 60 kilos today for demonstration's sake. And I'm gonna talk you through that as she does it, okay? So go the basic cues as always, right? We're gonna get the big brace. She's squeezing that bar into her upper back. Now, when she goes down, she's tensioning her quads and glutes, maintaining position and tightness and pausing dead still up in the hole. When she pauses, she is dead still and not moving. As you can see with M's hips, there is a lot of tension and tightness and control as she descends and she maintains that position perfectly in the hole there. Thank you. Go back in. Yep, we're good. Yeah, all right. So as you can see there, that is a very well executed paw squat. Now M has excellent technique. She has a lot of control through her hips, through the full range. You can see that actively her hips are creating tension from the ground up, okay? So that is an excellent paw squat. Now that's what you want your paw squat to look like. When we're going into the hole, we wanna to come to a dead stop. It's a pause squat, it's not an almost pause or a slow down squat. The purpose is we have to be able to create force out of the hole without having any stretch reflex or bounce. We've now taken that out of it completely. So now we're relying not just on muscling the bar out of the hole, but we're relying on our strong position and our foundation and our hips and our leverages to get us out of the hole in a perfect position. Now, if you don't maintain a perfect position with a pause squat, you will get punished, okay? Because you have now taken the bounce out. You can't rely on the bounce to overcome your bad technique. We now need to address the fact that there may be an issue or a weakness, and we're gonna hit that, right? We're gonna force ourselves into position in the hole, and that, my friends, is what is gonna help your squat. Now, with all movements, you can do them high bar and low bar, right? It really depends on you. I prefer to execute this movement mostly with a low bar position, but out of competition, you know, I'll put it in high bar as well. All right, guys, now quickly, I'm gonna get M to give you a demonstration of how to not do this movement, and these are probably a couple of the things that I see people getting wrong with this movement. Now, again, if you're getting it wrong, this is not an attack on you guys, I'm just trying to help you so you can get better, and this is how you can get better, so I do hope this helps. Now, for the first one, what Emma's gonna do is something what people commonly do is they drop into the hole, and they think that they've paused, but what they've done is they've almost paused it, but they're still slowly moving down. There's not a clear pause. So you'll see this here, right? She'll go into the hole, she'll attempt to pause, but then she still descends in, yep, and up, okay? Now, secondly, this one, she'll pause and then bounce out of the hole. So she pauses and then drops in and bounces. Good, back on the rack. Lovely, now, M is not the greatest at doing a shit squat, she's actually a good squatter. So her bad demonstrations weren't bad or good. Sorry guys. I'm not too sure exactly, but just so you know, right, that's pretty obvious what she's trying to, what she's trying to show us there is that there's no clear pause and there's still downward movement before she comes out of the hole. There's still some sort of a bounce or a stretch reflex, which is defeating the purpose of this movement. We want to come down to a dead stop and we want to hold that position, okay, so we're essentially in an isometric hold with a heavy load on your back. Now, the heaviest paw squat that I've done, I think is around the 370 kilo range, which is over 800 pounds, and to isometrically have to hold that weight and pause it takes a lot of control and strength in, in the hole with the positioning, right? Which is why we're doing it, we're building our strength in that range, which is at the bottom of the squat, in the hardest point, to maintain that position, okay? It's very easy to squat with good technique if we're going through half the range, but when we're forced into a weak point, it becomes very hard to maintain that positioning. 
And although we're trying to do that, it's much easier said than done. And this is an excellent way to start to enforce that position into your squats. Now, how should you implement this in your program? You know, sets and reps, whereabouts in your program should this be? Well, for me, I can use a poor squat at any point in my training, okay? I can use it to build work capacity with lighter weights when I'm, you know, a long way out of competition, or I can actually use it, you know, with, for heavier sets with less reps closer to the competition, and I can also wrap my knees for that, right? I can make it very competition specific. So whether you squat in sleeves or wraps, there's a, a lot of different ways you can utilize this squat. So it's not only great for hypertrophy and work capacity and conditioning, but it's also great for peaking your strength whilst you know, refining that technique, okay? Now, in saying that, your sets and reps will vary, right? I wouldn't often prescribe poor squats for more than eight reps. That seems a little bit barbaric and un necessary. Um, so generally you'll see pause reps in the ranges of four to six, but as I said, sometimes I do enjoy using them for singles, doubles, and triples. Uh, but it's just about how you're implementing it into your program and what the purpose for that is. Now, again, if you need any help with your programming or you're unsure of how to program for yourself, I will be bringing out a squat program very soon, but I also offer online coaching, which is customized to you and your needs and your goals. Next, we're gonna cover the tempo squat. That's a fun one, I'm gonna tell you right now. Let's go. All right, guys, now we're gonna go over the tempo squat, and again, there are multiple ways to do this, so I'll talk you through a little bit of that. But first, we're gonna discuss, you know, the purpose and our intention with the tempo squat, you know, where our pause squat was heavily focused on the positioning in the hole itself. The tempo squat, again, this is absolutely necessary to have in your program if you are serious about creating an excellent technique with your squat. Because remember, an excellent technique is the key to unlocking a massive squat. You can muscle up whatever you can muscle up, but you're always gonna be selling yourself short if your technique is shit. And that's just facts. So the purpose of the tempo squat, this is going to allow us to practice and build the skill of grounding and creating tension from the ground up, okay? So if you've watched any of my more recent squat tutorials, I talk about how we externally rotate from the floor, right? We create tension from the floor all the way up to our hands on the bar. But for the purpose of this video, we're simply gonna talk about the tension from the toes up to the quads and what we're gonna be utilizing the tempo squat for. So Em's gonna give us a really quick demonstration here and she'll give us a demonstration of two different tempos. The first tempo is going to be a 3-0-0. She's going to do two reps with this. Now the 3-0-0 means three seconds down and then straight back up. Now watch as she descends. She is maintaining tension. Three seconds. Perfect shape, perfect positioning. She's externally rotating from the floor. Tension in the hips. On the last one, it's a 3-1-0. Three seconds down. Pause. Up. Good. Back on the rack. Good, lovely. So as you can see, there's two different types of tempo there. I just sprung it on her, she did pretty well. So the first tempo is a three zero zero. Now the numbers represent a part of the squat. The first number meaning the eccentric portion, the second number meaning if there is a pause or not, and the last number meaning back out of the hole. So three zero zero means three seconds down, up. Three one zero means three seconds down, one second pause, and up. So again, you can also utilize tempos and pauses together, okay? So they work well together as well. An excellent exercise to do. But again, we'll go back to the real reason as to why we're doing this. It's all good now, we'll just talk about this for a second. So with the ground, if you come stand here for me actually, I'm gonna give you a little visual cue. So what we're focusing on with the tempo squat in particular is we're thinking about the floor first. What are we doing with our feet? Now, I always recommend to people to squat with a shoe that they can feel the ground with, so something thin or barefoot, because we want to have a feel and control of the ground. So with her toes, what she's doing right now, her big toe is digging into the ground, okay? And she's creating outward force. She's turning it outwards, and her heels and her big toe are anchoring her into the ground. Now, she has even weight distributed across her heels and her forefoot or the front of her foot. 
Now that external rotation is now traveling up her legs, okay? So what she's doing is she externally rotates from the hip, but she flexes her quad, okay? And she squeezes her glutes. Now, as you can see, well, you can't necessarily see from where you are, but everything in her lower, lower body is externally rotated, meaning it's rotating outwards. Now, what her goal is, is to maintain this tension. This is the hard part, on the way down. It's very easy to stand at the top of a squat and have that tension, but to maintain that tension on the way down without simply dive bombing into the squat with no control, that takes a lot, okay? And this is what this exercise is used to practice. So it's very useful for that and it's very, it's very difficult because we're now under tension for a long period of time. So it's also excellent for building hypertrophy. So keeping in mind that the pause squat was really about positioning in the hole. The tempo squat is about building that tension so you have the ability to be in that position in the hole. Because again, we have to break these things down into portions. They don't just all happen together. It's a very complex movement, especially when you're adding a heavy load on your back. Now, if you struggle with maintaining tension or even finding tension off the ground, because it can be a tricky concept, and a lot of people don't think about what they're doing with their feet when they lift, but it is a huge thing in actually being able to engage the entire body in a lift. So if you're struggling with the feeling of feeling like you're able to grip the floor and externally rotate and create that external force, what you want to do is grab a simple hip circle, okay? Now, we typically see these used around the knees. But for a grounding exercise like this, this was recommended to me by a good friend of mine, Andrew Locke, Dr. Andrew Locke. Bring it a little bit lower for me, about mid shin there, a bit lower, just below the knee sleeves. So you wanna, if you have knee sleeves on, just below the knee sleeve. Now, with the band being a little bit lower, it's creating more force around the ankle region and the feet. So now you're essentially, the force of the band is trying to pull you in, all right? And now you have a physical cue to externally rotate out from. And the, the reason I like to use it on the shins and not the knees is because the external rotation doesn't just come from the knees, okay? We're missing the vital point, and that is the ground point. It comes from the floor. So if you can externally rotate from the knees, but you have no ground base and no external force from the ground, you're still gonna be loose and out of position. It needs to start from the floor and travel all the way up the body. As soon as one of this, these pieces or links you know, become weak, the whole chain becomes weak. So it's really important to put it together. If you have any questions about that, please drop a comment and let me know and uh, I'll do my best to help you. And we'll chat in a little bit about how you can implement this in your training and where you would put it in your program. Let's go. All right guys, so there is the tempo squat. Now, where should you put this in your program? Now for me, I believe the tempo squat is a well-designed exercise for a off-season program or when you're maybe more than eight weeks out of competition. I'm not saying that there's no place for them, you know, closer to competition. Sure there is. If your goal, again, is to really refine technique or you're struggling with the grounding sensation and feeling, that's an excellent way to keep working on that. However, the bulk of this movement should be done in the off-season because, again, it is also an excellent hypertrophy builder. It is a massive quad builder. The time under tension that you're gonna have from a tempo squat is gonna be very valuable in building big muscles on your legs. So, great for off season. One, hypertrophy. Two, you're gonna go into the, the heavier weeks of your prep with a well-refined squat, especially if you're doing things like tempos and pauses together, right? You're now working on a complete package. So, you've got your grounding from the feet up, right? And then you've got the pause in the hole with the positioning. So, now you're able to descend into the hole whilst maintaining all that tension, holding that position, and with the pause, you're now able to, again, hold that position in the hole and learn to generate strength through your position. Now, we get one more variation to do. This is a little harder, a little more advanced, and it starts bringing this whole thing into the big picture, and that's the one and a quarter squat. So we're gonna break that down for you and show you how to do it. Let's get it, baby. All right, baby, we are back for our final variation. Now, this variation, as I said, this is a little more advanced. It is nasty, it is hard, uh, but it is definitely worthwhile. And I do believe that you should be implementing this in your program, especially if you have implemented the first two. This would be a fantastic stepping stone onto this movement. Now, 
with the last two movements, they served a purpose, right? The low bar squat, sorry, the pause squat uh, being really focused on the position in the hole. Now, with the tempo squat, we were focused on the descent and maintaining that tension and positioning into the hole. With the one and a quarter squat, now, I want you to think about something, right? I'll try and break this down so you can understand. Now, let's think you have a video of the perfect squat. Now, if someone was to fast forward and rewind that video and show it to you backwards, right? Let's say you go into the hole, you come out of the hole. The ideal squat would look absolutely identical whether it was played forwards or backwards, okay? It would be the exact same position on the way down that you have on the way up. Now that is extremely hard to do and not many people can really do that. But we always have to have a standard to aim for. We always must aim to be getting as close to perfect as possible. Now this exercise, what it is excellent for is we're doubling down on this positioning, right? Now we're being forced to, by this movement, we're going down into the hole in the perfect position. Now we're not pausing, but we are being forced to come back out of the hole in the perfect position. Now why is that? It is because once you come one quarter of the way out of the hole, you descend back into the hole again, as if you're starting the squat again, but from a lower point. Now we want you to maintain the exact same position through your body the entire time, no matter what direction you are moving in. Now if you can create this amount of body control and tension and strength, and eventually overload it to a point where you can handle heavy weights, I dare say you'll have a very easy time executing a near perfect back squat. Now, M's gonna give us a demonstration here of two repetitions, okay? M, again, has excellent technique, and you can watch her hips as she squats. You can see the tension she's creating from the ground up. Now, M's gonna do this. She's not going to bounce. We do not bounce in the hole. We stay very smooth with our changes of direction, okay? There is no cheating. It's smooth, tight, control, up a quarter, down, up, one more, perfect. One more like that, squeeze everything. Up, down, up, perfect. Two reps, easy peasy, good shit. All right guys, so there you can see a one and a quarter squat executed very nicely. It's a very difficult movement to do. And as you can see, it, it, would, it would be hard to execute, right? So it definitely takes a level of strength and control you know, to actually perform this movement. But again, we start very light, okay? We don't have to start heavy with these movements. The more difficult and complex a movement is, the lighter it should be done until we develop the skill and the strength to progress the load, okay? So we should definitely be working towards having this in our program. How did you find it? What a good, what a good. You know, these are all squat variations that I you know, give to my, to my lifters that I've used for myself. Um, M here, she also coaches here at the gym. She's coach of our powerlifting team. So again, she's giving these to her clients as well because these are tried and true and they're not fancy, they're not bullshit. This is all done with a fucking bar on the back and some plates, okay? You don't need anything fucking fancy, no machines. These simple squat variations are fucking incredible in helping you build a big squat. Would you go figure? Would you go figure, you don't need to do fancy shit, you just need to fucking squat, right? But you need to have a plan, you need to have intention, and you need to execute correctly. We'll chat in a second about how you can implement this in your program. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Let's do it. All right, guys, now again, how do we implement this into our program? When should it be done? Again, this is a movement that can be done off season or close to competition, depending on what you're doing. If you've come out of a competition and you realize there's a few things you really need to work on and those things revolve around your positioning in and out of the hole, that's an excellent off-season technique builder, right? We need to increase our ability or our technique uh, to increase our squat. It's pretty simple. We can get stronger, yes? And we're always trying to get stronger. We're trying to add mass to our muscles to get bigger. Gives us potential to move more weight. But if you're not taking time to refine your technique, you're doing half a fucking job. And if you're doing half a job and you want fucking results, you're taking the piss, champion. You know what I'm saying? So I do hope that helps, you know? Again, sorry, I'll add, it can be done close to competition as well for technique refinement. I personally wouldn't be doing it close to competition. 
I'd say the more advanced that you get and the higher the ladder you climb or the higher the strength period you climb, pyramid you climb, you will find that you need to be more specific closer to competition than someone who is uh, perhaps a little more intermediate. Okay, but that's uh, a different topic for a different time. Perhaps we can cover that. But again, I do hope this helps. You know, these things were instrumental in me building a big squat, a 415 kilo squat. And these techniques and variations have helped me help others build massive fucking squats. There's no doubt about that. You know, I've had a handful of guys that I've coached squat, you know, more than 340 kilograms. I've had fucking four women squat more than 250 kilograms, right? And it's not just, well, yes, they're freaks. Yeah, let's face it, right? But also, I help them achieve that by refining their technique and then, you know, they have all this strength and all these genetics, but they need to do something with it to achieve that final product. And that's what the technique is, right? So if you're a fucking freak or you're a beast or you're not, right? Focus on your technique and you will become better. Okay, so if you're not genetically inclined to be a fucking tank, well, instead of being sad about it, yes, keep eating up, keep doing everything you can to add size, but hey, Secret weapon, be a technician. There are a lot of technicians in powerlifting that aren't genetically freaky, but they're strong and they know how to leverage and move weight. Okay, so don't be a fucking victim and don't be a bitch. Just get better. And until next time, like this video, drop a comment, subscribe, and then go to the fucking gym and do your squats. Let's go, baby.